what's up guys welcome back to the channel today we'll be drafting a basic bodies block pattern i plan to take down the old video that's why i'm redoing this tutorial so these are the tools i'll be using to create the pattern and here are the measurements that i'll be needing for this tutorial so let's get right into the video so here is my fresh pattern paper and i'll be using this edge right here as my center front to begin i'll be going down a few inches from the top end of my pattern paper i'm going to draw a line across that point and that will become my shoulder line and from this line i'll be taking all my vertical measurements starting with my shoulder to bust measurements at 11 inches so from the shoulder line i'll be marking 11 inches downwards i'm going to square that point across and that will become my bust line Next, I'll be marking my shoulder to weight measurement at 17 inches. Again, I'll be starting from the shoulder line and I'm marking 17 inches downwards. And using my ruler, I'll be drawing a horizontal line across that point and that will become my waistline. Now, the next measurement to take is my shoulder to hip measurement at 25 inches. So I'll simply be going down 8 inches from the waistline. So I'm marking 8 inches downwards from the waistline, square that point across and that will become my hip line. So right now I have 4 horizontal lines, the shoulder line, the bust line, the waistline and the hip line. So now I'll be moving on to work on the neckline and the shoulder slope. And for the neckline, I'll be using 3 inches for the neck width and the neck depth to give me a simple round neckline. Now along the shoulder line, I marked 3 inches away from the center front. I also marked 3 inches downwards from the shoulder line. Now I'm just going in with my French curve to connect the two points together. Now this is just the standard way of creating a neckline on a basic bodice block. But the shape of this can always be altered to suit whatever neckline you are going for. Now it's time to work on the shoulder slope. And I'll start by marking half of my across shoulder measurement on the shoulder line. So I'm marking that point away from the center front along the shoulder line. And from there I'll be going down by 1 inch. And then I'll connect that new point to meet the neckline in a slant. So I'll just go in with my ruler to connect it to the neckline like so and there's the shoulder stop. Next I'll be creating my armhole but before doing that I'll be going up from the bust line by 2 inches to create my upper chest line. And I got this point by dividing my bust circumference by 6 and adding 1.5 which gives me approximately 8 inches so I can either mark 8 inches downwards from the shoulder slope or come up from the bust line by 2 inches as I'm doing right now. So when I'm done marking, I'll square that point across as usual and that line becomes my upper chest line. Next, I'll be connecting the shoulder slope straight downwards to meet the chest line. And to make sure it's straight, I'm just marking 8 inches away from the center front along the chest line because that was what I marked for the shoulder slope. So now I'll just go in with my ruler to connect the shoulder slope to the chest line like so. And on this line, I'll be creating my armhole. And the first thing I'm going to do is to find the midpoint of this line. And from that point, I'll be going in by three quarter of an inch. Next, I'll be marking a quarter of my bust circumference along the chest line. So my bust circumference is 40 divided by 4, that's 10, and I'm marking that point away from the center front. And then I'll be connecting these new points to the shoulder slope to create the armhole. So I'm just going in with my French curve and making sure that I'm connecting these two points to the shoulder slope and there's the armhole. So now that I'm done with that, I'll be moving on to create the dart for this front pattern. But first, I'm just indicating my center front and that this pattern will be cut on a fold. So to create the dart, I'm marking half of my bust span measurement along the bust line, the waistline and the hip line. 
so my bust pan measurement is eight inches divided by two that's four and i'll be adding half an inch to that making a total of 4.5 and i'll be marking that on the bust line the waistline and the hip line now the dart is always created along the waistline so on the waistline i'll be marking three quarter of an inch on both sides of that point which is 0.75 you can use 0.5 for a smaller bust or even one inch for a much bigger bust but i'll be using 0.75 now on the bust line i'll be going down from that point by one inch while on the hip line i'll be coming up by two inches so now it's time to connect the points so i'll be going in with my ruler to first connect them in a straight line and then i'll be moving on to connect the rest of the points in sort of like a triangle so here's the front that created along the waistline like i said before i came down from the bust line by one inch and from the hip line i came up by two inches now it's time to start placing all my horizontal measurements divided by four so i already marked a quarter of my bust circumference along the chest line and now i'll be moving on to do the same for the waistline and the hip line so i'm marking a quarter of my waist circumference along the waistline and to that measurement i'll be adding the measurement for the dart the total measurement for the dart which is 1.5 inches so i'm going to add 1.5 inches to that measurement and then along the hip line i'll simply be marking a quarter of my hip circumference so now that i'm done marking all my horizontal measurements i'll be moving on to connect them so i'll start by connecting the hip line to the waistline and then the waistline to the chest line then i'll just go in with my french curve to smoothen out any sharp edges before going ahead to cut so i didn't add any seam allowance to this pattern i'll be doing that when cutting it on the fabric so after cutting i'm just going to make all my annotations and that's basically it for the front bodies now for the back pattern i brought out fresh pattern paper and i'm essentially going to be doing what i did for the front except for a few changes which i will be highlighting as we go so right now i'm just drawing my shoulder line from where i'll be taking all my vertical measurements so like i did for the front i'll be taking my shoulder to bust measurement at 11 inches square that point across to create my bust line next is the shoulder to waist measurement so i'm just marking that point from the shoulder line and i'm going to square it across and that will be my waistline for the back and from there i'll be going down eight inches to get my hip line now moving on to the back neckline i'm going to be maintaining the neck width at three inches while for the neck depth i'll be using 1.5 and after marking this point i'll just go in with my french curve and connect them together so the change here in neck depth is the first difference between the front pattern and the back so now i'll be moving on to create my shoulder slope exactly like i did for the front after which i'll be going up from the bust line by two inches to get my upper chest line and like i did for the front i'll connect the chest line to meet the shoulder slope find the midpoint of that new line except i won't be going in by three quarter of an inch this time so now i'll just go ahead to mark a quarter of my bust circumference on the chest line and then using my french curve i'll connect the two points together to get my back armhole next i'll be creating the dart for the back and this time i'll start marking half of my bust span measurements from the chest line all the way down to the hip line now this time i'll be coming down by one inch from the chest line not the bust line and from the hip line i'll be going up by two inches then i'll go ahead to connect these points in a straight line like so then along the waistline i'll be marking 0.75 on both sides of that line after which i'll be going in with my ruler to connect all these points together so now i'll just go ahead to indicate my center back i did not add a zip allowance to this pattern so it can either be caught on the fold or you can add zip allowance so now the last thing to do before cutting is to insert a quarter of my horizontal measurement 
I already marked a quarter of my boss circumference on the chest line. Now on the waistline, I'm going to be marking a quarter of my waist circumference plus the total measurement for the dart. And on the hip line, I'll be marking a quarter of my hip circumference. So now that I'm done marking, I'll just go ahead to connect the hip line to the waistline and then the waistline to the chest line. So now I'm all done with the back pattern and the difference between this and the front is in the dart, the armhole and the neckline. Usually the back bodice comes with a zipper allowance along the center back but I opted not to include my zipper allowance so this can be added afterwards or can be cut on a fold depending on what I'm going for. So now I'll just go ahead to cut out my back pattern. Again, no allowance or ease was added to this pattern. I'll be doing that when cutting onto fabric. So guys, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll be seeing you in my next video.